Okay, um, I'd like to welcome everybody to Football Focus UAE. Today is a special edition in conversation with David Mariani. We're here at the uh, Calva Club. We've already done our uh, episode 17. It's a lovely little club here and we'd like to say thank you to Calva. I'd like to welcome Ian as well and, and David. And, and David, thank you so much for Thanks for uh, coming to me. speak with us. We really appreciate it. And as we, as everybody knows, we do this to to promote the pro league to expats. We also have bad approval from the Minister of Education, so it goes out to schools and yeah. young people. Watch this, David. You know, they we want them to see how they can be successful in other things. So, hey, my students, make sure you're listening, okay? <laughs> so, first of all, David, we uh, again like to say thank you, and Ian. So Ian, would, maybe you'd like to start us off? Yeah, just think, one thing we'd be interested in taking you right back to the beginning. What's your sort of first memory of ever playing football and then what made you decide to become a professional footballer? What was your sort of journey? Um, <laughs> Big question, David. <laughs> no, well, I can... Uh, well, I can not remember exactly uh, the time I started, but uh, that's a question that... Uh, I asked my father, of mm. course, because it was with him that I started to play football. So my father and my mother told me that uh, around three, three years old, I already started to play football. Um, yeah, this was the early beginnings with my father in the park. Uh, honestly, I learned a lot, uh, even the, the controls, the passes, the shots, everything that I that I use, I guess you learned that on the street. Mm. Uh, I learned with my father, I learned with my, uh, well, with my neighborhood mm. friends. <coughs> and um, already with five years old, I, I, I joined my first uh, football club in my neighborhood. And uh, well, I, I can't even remember, but I think the first time I touched the ball for me was clear, or the first time I heard about that you can be a professional football player or you that decided saw, that's for you yeah or, or I saw a game or I received <coughs> a shirt mm. for me it was uh, I had only football in my mind honestly it didn't pass one day that I didn't touch a ball rain snow as it's <laughs> in Switzerland yeah. you know less sun but <laughs> uh, always playing football mm. alone or with my friends or against a so tree a, or an early <laughs> age you decided this is the career yeah, you wanted to yeah for to. me it was, uh, was clear since the first uh, moment oh, I touched the ball that I want to be a professional footballer and uh, yes I am play. and uh, <laughs> I feel so privileged I think uh, when you're younger you don't realize what what it really means mm. that you, you can live your dream I mean that's something spectacular it is only a small percent actually get to where you are yeah you, you you don't even think about oh i've played with so many players and i'm the only one from all this but it's just really worldwide you i mean it's not only related to football it's related to any job to do what you love is yeah, it's, it's, so blessed and uh, doesn't matter how old or to hear where that. i am so just but who inspired you yeah. as, as a young guy? Ian wanted to. Mm. Who inspired you? Which player <laughs> you looked and thought of? Well, uh, my father was a Juventus uh, fan, so he supported Juventus. He was not so crazy about football or watching football, but uh, yeah, that was the team that he sometimes yeah. watched. So Great team, he though. told me. Look, this player, Alessandro Del Piero. Yeah, yeah fantastic. So this player. was my first idol. I had everything from Del Piero. I had shirts, I had the <laughs> sweat bands, right, sweat yeah, bands yeah. or the captain band. And I put the captain band on the, uh, during the games, even though I was maybe not captain. But uh, yeah, Alessandro Del Piero was my idol. And um, fantastic player. Later well. on, um, when I grew up, maybe with 11, 12 years old, when everything went more serious and uh, there came a player and uh, again my father told me look this player and uh, was Andrea Pirlo mm -hmm. and, fantastic uh, player. I could really r relate to him watching him I saw some movements that uh, well we, we were similar I don't want to say that I'm uh, <laughs> even a percentage of him because he's a legend but um, I mean, the skills that he had, uh, the pass accuracy, 
uh, he was not the fastest player. So was for me it was nice to see a player that was not so fast like uh, now in the modern football or Cristiano five seven years ago, um, and still he was world class. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So that helped me a lot during all my early stages, even of my professional football, because interesting. The, the people always doubt players that are not so fast. Mm. Um, even more today, and to have a role model like Andrea Pirlo gave me a lot of confidence to say I don't need to be as fast as my teammates or in the physical tests that we did. I, I never been the fastest guy. So I knew uh, with my technique, um, with, uh, with my speed, uh, the first five meters or even be fast in the head yeah. helped me a lot. And uh, watching Andrea Pirlo was always like, just it's nice yeah. to know is it that technical ability can, can can win out as well. You don't need to be big and strong exactly. and fast. You know, exactly. as long as you you got that technically all round gifted game and here yeah, as well, right. mentally, yeah, as mentally, well. yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm. That's really interesting. But, I mean, we, we've looked at your career, we've followed you here, mm. and you've got a, a very interesting career. You play for a variety of clubs, some big clubs as well. Why the UAE? Mm. <laughs> All places. Because um, it's not exactly the Super League or the Premier League mm -hmm. or the Bundesliga. Why? Yeah, well, um, I think uh, growing up in Switzerland or in Europe, uh, of course, you, you're not thinking to come to the UAE. I'm saying this with the uh, utmost respect to the UAE uh, league. Um, I mean, growing up in Switzerland, the eyes goes to Germany. Mm -hmm. So the Bundesliga is uh, the next step that you want to take as a player in Switzerland. Uh, and of course, there are leagues like Spain or Italy and England too. But for a Swiss player, the, the usual transfer to a top league is uh, to the Bundesliga mm -hmm. and uh, well I had many teammates that play with me they went to the Bundesliga but as you said um, I had not uh, like the, the role model career from a Swiss player uh, I'm, I wasn't early on uh, in the first team um, I remember you saying it took a while to get to yeah the it took a while to get uh, to the first team it took a while to uh, yeah, mark my my name on the league uh, that they knew Mariani. So um, I don't want to blame it on that, only on that. But it's for sure it's a big uh, reason that you are not getting the chance to go to the big league anymore when you hit the 24, 25 mm -hmm. years. Uh, that's normal because the clubs they want to buy young players they want to sell them again to maybe a bigger club or even a bigger sure. league um, so for me I was around 26 27 and uh, in Switzerland they knew everybody everyone knew me uh, I was on the team of the year and uh, I was really on on top of the midfielders there. Yeah, you played um, some of the best teams in, in yeah, Zurich. Yeah, I played Europa League uh, with Lugano, so that yeah. was a nice experience too. So honestly, I was still hoping that uh, maybe I get the chance to a go to Germany. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't there, or I had to decide. There were uh, two ways, so uh, I wanted to leave Switzerland, so um, I had uh, this offer from Bulgaria, from Levski Sofia, that is uh, in Bulgaria the biggest club. Mm. Yeah, they are and, the club uh, the Champions League. So I decided maybe if I go there, I can get the chance later on. But the thing is, in football, the time flies. So you are <laughs> getting older, you're not getting younger. So <laughs> yeah, there came a, a, a day during this year in Bulgaria that uh, I received that offer from uh, Shabab Alali. And uh, Maybe it was January, February, so um, in that year, and so it took a while to to think about that, um, to analyze it, mm -hmm. what it means, and uh, yeah, well, <laughs> it took like six months for me to think, uh, mm -hmm. and in the end, I decided yes, uh, let's do it. Uh, I changed also the perspective, and the perspective was easy. I mean. 
you start to play football, everybody dreams to, as you said, to play in a big European league. But not everybody has the chance. So everybody has a, a different, uh, different pa- path. Yeah. 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 So you can be Sergio Ramos or Griezmann and play for the biggest team in the world. As a Swiss player, you can stay in Switzerland. What happened to maybe 95% of all players growing up in Switzerland. You can play there all your life in the first division, in the second division. And then there is the way to come to a country like the UAE and or maybe the MLS or something like that. And honestly, when I made the transfer here, it surprised me that so many players, even players that are playing currently in the Swiss national team, I won't say any names, they were like, wow, what? Yeah, what happened, you know? it's a wonderful league. Really I mean, uh, Shabab Al Ali, big club. Uh, it's an amazing I've club. I've seen I mean, the facilities. You know, it's yeah, it's amazing. It's the. I mean, th- that's the club of the Sheikh of Dubai. I mean, uh, mm. there is nothing bigger than that in here or, and the world knows this club. And uh, uh, yeah, they were asking me like, if you can you speak with your manager <laughs> or. Uh, can you speak with the club and this stuff? And they told me, David, you really deserve that, you know? So I started to realize in the early months when I played in Shabab Alali what it really means to be there. It's a top club. And uh, yeah, so um, there's nothing to, yeah, I mean, I'm really proud of that, what you I did. So, you yeah. And uh, I'm not regretting any minute. So honestly, if I could, turn back time I would come earlier <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's interesting you say that isn't it because from obviously we're English and coming from England coming out here didn't really know much about the Arabian Gulf League didn't really watch it it wasn't promoted outside the UAE at all and it's the same obviously in, in Europe so you don't know what you're getting into until you come out here and mm-hmm. it's only until someone like yourself takes that step and yes. comes in and realises actually how, how good it is the facilities are the standard of football is getting better and better mm-hmm. each season it's a great um, to be involved we're involved I love it absolutely mm-hmm. and you know really. that's the main reason why we're doing this is trying to promote the Arabian Golf League to, to Europe and the wider community so people we can see it. what a good league it is mm-hmm. and hopefully we have more players like yourself coming over mm-hmm. and gracing us with, with the talents and helping to improve local local talent that we've already got mm-hmm. But wanted to ask you, thank you for ans- ask, answering that very honestly, mm-hmm. David. You know, it's been a, a very interesting year in football. It's the first ever season where you played behind closed doors. You've had no fans. Mm-hmm. We call it the 12th player. Mm-hmm. You haven't had that 12th player. How is, we don't know because we're not football players, David, and my students aren't and people are watching this. How's it been playing like that? Mm-hmm. You know, the beautiful game without that. 12th player without the fans and I mean and I've got to say it's been one of the best seasons in the Pro League ever Mm -hmm. this season what's that all about David please Mm -hmm. Um, yeah so I think you have to adjust some things Um, I mean the preparation of the game uh, when you visualize the weekend uh, the game is coming you visualize also the moment that you step into the pitch when you warming up before the game the the crowd outside <laughs> uh, <laughs> or the people w- waiting the game it's like a high isn't it? yeah the fans so give you, the high. Um, you take energy from there too i mean you take energy uh, from the way to the hotel to the stadium already seeing maybe kids outside playing the stadium or yeah it's a it's an event so you take a lot of energy because you know that today you have a big chance to make other people happy yeah. and i mean that's a great thing to do Very as a happy. football player yeah. so that you had to adjust so the routine team changed a little bit maybe you were more focused uh, by yourself and um, well honestly it, it went fast i mean on, honestly i hear my teammates that are on the on the stands now because they're not on the bench they're making noise I mean <laughs> they are making noise the assistant coaches are making noise the other team are making noise so honestly when you score a goal I always had the feeling that 
it's not a full stadium, but there were Still people in the stadium because you hear the shouting, mm. you hear the support of your teammates. So honestly, we miss a lot the, the fans. But as I said, adjusting that, realizing what is happening, um, it was a, a nice, nice season. And it was a nice. Season. One of the best seasons. Mm. Is, it, is it a good or a bad thing that you can now hear your manager? <laughs> no, honestly, it's a, it's a, for me, it's a really good thing. Uh, in the contrary, our manager is a really focused person, and uh, he really only give advice when when he need to. So mm. he's not. So when he he's speaks, a motivator, he's a motivator. Yeah, so yeah. when he speaks during a game, it's important. It's, it's, uh, it's important, or you hear him when yeah, you have to do more. Mm. Like uh, he's not criticizing players. I had coaches that are criticizing sure. all the time and. He's not like that, so it's fine for me. And even even he sh sometimes want to give me some advices, and I'm a little bit far away. I can't really hear him really because mm. there's so much going on during a game. So many people speak. So now you hear more your teammates. Mm. That's for sure. Um, but during a game, you you're on fire. Mm. Um, so you, you were saying before, obviously, it was more of an event when you come to the grounds mm -hmm. from the hotel and the coach with the fans there. So is it is it difficult to you don't really get that adrenaline boost now? So obviously you mm -hmm. drive to the ground yourself, you come back here to change rooms. Do, what what fuels your adrenaline to make sure when you cross that line mm -hmm. you're at the right state to play the game? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think it's also a dangerous thing to only take the adrenaline from the from the fans. Mm, good point, good point. Um, but it gives you an adrenaline. Uh, ghost pumps? No, uh, yeah, how I say? goosebumps. Yeah. yeah. So ghost. yeah, I remember first games as a professional I mean this was something new because in the youth you don't have a uh, spectacular mm. uh, yeah people watching so this helps you but now as you said like you're more focused on yourself you're more motivating your teammates mm. the teammates are so motivating these them take, yeah take, so yeah, many much. positive things I mean we speak more during the warm-up uh, what we have to do so maybe you are more focused on yourself. Maybe yeah. there's Very also less distraction. Yeah, I, I guess. Very interesting because um, it's been a fantastic season. Yeah. I mean, maybe that's a lot of that. Yeah, it can, can that. be. But uh, will be interesting when the fans coming back. So because you have to change again uh, yeah. some yeah. some things. But as I said, now Very I think everybody, everybody, yeah, they're yeah. Now we are playing without spectators. So that's. That's the way it is. So, mm. but we are waiting them, and uh, we're really looking forward to yeah, welcoming we, them again to yeah, the stadium. I think all of us are looking forward yeah. to that, uh, David. But Ian, we're going to finish off with a very important question. Yeah, last question, really, David. Is we have a lot, a lot of students watching, a lot mm -hmm. of young people, maybe aspiring to become professional footballers. If you have one bit of advice to give them, what would that be? Listen, students, carefully, okay? <laughs> <laughs> one, huh? Just one. <laughs> Well, I guess um, belief in yourself. So very good. Um, and work hard, things like that. I yeah, of course. I think there are stages, uh, but believing in yourself is the, the first stage, and it starts with that because you will always be doubted. Uh, you will be always criticized. Um, there will come coaches or people that are making decisions. Sadly, it's like that in football or. That's the way it is, maybe everywhere. And they decide if you can go a step forward or not. But I guess if you believe in yourself, there, you will always find a way. Somehow you will always find a way. Of course, you have to have quality and working hard. I mean, um, These are nobody gives you uh, everything you want. So you have to work for that. But believing in yourself, it starts with that and then uh, you will always find a way. Thank you, thank you, <laughs> David, for today. And thank you for spending a bit of time with David Mariani for Zimbabwe Lathley, Calder, second in assists mm -hmm. in the, I have to say, in the Pro League. We, what Ian has a name for you, call him the, the postman. <laughs> the mailman. The mailman. The mailman, because he always delivers. He does always <laughs> deliver. It's, it's really, I, I commentated on quite a few Calder games mm -hmm. and David, I've enjoyed watching Calder team. What a, we've said that you've, You've been the surprise package. Mm -hmm. A lot of people predicted you would go down this season, Calber, but 
this has been fantastic. You've had some great yeah. wins and <laughs> some fantastic <laughs> games. It's, it's been a, a real honour and a pleasure watching you. Thank you so Thank much you today. Okay, Thank soon. You so listen carefully. Thank you, Ian. Thank you. Thank you to our cameraman, Sam. Thank, Thank you very much. much.